China's junk patents could be weapon of war against free nations. This is an editor's choice report. There's stories that I think are, well, in this case, I'm picking them, but uh, they're stories of note that may not, they may not be the top stories, but I think they're worth paying attention to. And we have China likely winner of the information age e-commerce supply chain by maintaining peace and corporate property rights. <laughs> this is IP, man, IP. China on a mission to turn junk patents into treasure. That's right, junk patents into treasure. And this is the first in a series of reports on Chinese intellectual property as Beijing seeks to make IP protection the central part of its new development strategy. It was not for IP when it didn't have IP, but now that it's developing IP, now it will use IP as a weapon of war against everyone else in the way that United States. I mean, IP is basically for the West and for the United States especially. If you want to call it, it's been a colonizing force. It's uh, putting people in, in kind of a, well, a situation where because they didn't come upon the technology first, if they want to develop as a nation, they have to just, just to use the technology, they have to pay people money to be able to, it raises their cost of development significantly because they have to pay this IP. Well, now China would like to do the same to the rest of the world, right? I don't blame the nation state, although I blame all nation states wholly and, and, and together in using IP as a colonizing weapon of war against a free people. And all people deserve to be a free in all of the nations. Shenzhen University, a relatively young educated institution at 38 years old, filed the third highest number of international patents in the world last year, beaten only by the University of California and the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. Its 252 patent filings were more than John Hopkins and Harvard combined. And uh, so what they do is, uh, in general, not just China, but you create a whole bunch of uh, IP patents and then you, you want them to be as vague as possible. So then when any small entity tries to do anything that might challenge you, you just you just sue them. And if they don't have the money for a good lawyer, and it really comes down to good lawyers, it's not about truth, it's about lawyers. It's about the quality of the lawyer, to the sophistry of lawyering, basically, is what it's about. And you got to pay the, the... Lawyers are essentially sophists at this point. So the sophists come in, and if you don't know what sophists are, Greek sophists, they were... They were the lawyers of their time, and they weren't act actually after truth. They were actually after the rhetoric that would convince someone within the alleged framework of the language of the law that they were right, that dazzle you with their, with their wonders and alls. No truth, no truth to anything that they do, other than the truth of sophistry, which is a, a technique, basically, to win an argument even when you don't have the facts on your side. And what they do then is they sue you and you have a choice, which is lose in court because you will, because you can't afford a lawyer or, well, even if you can get to the court because just paying a lawyer might bankrupt small companies or, or settle with them. You settle with them one or two ways. Stop doing what you're doing so you can't challenge them. Your technology can't challenge them. Or they make sure that they get their pound of flesh so that you're, you're basically de facto, I mean, it's a, fort of, it's a feudalism of the mind is what it is. You are renting your, the space of your own mind to others because this technology, this, this information, it belongs to all of humanity, not just the folks that, that, that originally made the discoveries. And there's, there's ways that you can consider compensating people for being the innovators without locking their technology forever behind these firewalls or for ridiculous long periods of time uh, behind these firewalls that, that are essentially they're, they're colonizing thought. They're colonizing innovation so that they can prevent technology from freeing human beings at small scales who might then be able to compete with large-scale oppressive systems with, with, with the nationalists, whether they're nation-state nationalists or, or corporate nationalists. And that's that's that. And I don't really need to go over the other links. This is really all I really wanted to cover with this segment.